would you stand to your feet as we worship Jesus today? Come on. Come on, would you sing this out? There's a fountain no but blessings overflow. Live in water and free from this mercy sea. There's a joy I know deep inside these bones. Never ending well, well I thirst no more. Sing it out. This broken heart when he made me whole There's no power in hell that could separate I'm forever held by his amazing grace Rejoice, rejoice my soul Come on, sing rejoice Rejoice, rejoice my soul Hey, praise the Lord Jesus came for me He me two songs they just talk about how we get to praise Jesus and there's no greater day to praise Jesus than today amen come on church would you take a moment just to focus on Jesus maybe lift your hands would you connect with your hearts with the Lord he wants to minister to you today in the darkness we were waiting without hope and without light till from heaven you came running there was a mercy in your eyes to fulfill the lying prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt come on church those online would you sing this praise the father here we go praise the father praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. Come on, sing it. God of glory, majesty, oh, praise forever to the King of kings. To reveal the kingdom. To reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the laws to redeem the whole creation you did not despise the cross for even in your suffering you saw to the other side knowing this was our salvation Jesus for
on the perfect sacrifice
Would you turn to your neighbor, give him a high five or a handshake as you find your seat? Wow. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Higher Vision Church. We are so glad you're here. Can you hear me? No? Can it's on. Mic- Can we hear me? Oh, oh beautiful. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Higher Vision Church. My name is Leilani. This is my sister, Haley. We both serve as pastors on staff here at Higher Vision Church, and we're just so glad to welcome you to church today. Can we do something? Can we all put our hands together and welcome everyone to church today? We are so glad to have you all with us. If it is your first time at church, we'd love for you to scan the QR code that's on the seat back in front of you, or you can go to highervision.church and you can fill out a connect card there. Yeah, and we would love to send you some Chick-fil-A. Who likes Chick-fil-A? You can't have it today because it's Sunday, but uh, sometime this week you can. We have so many fun things happening after service today. We actually have an Easter egg hunt. We have real live bunnies and a photo wall and a play place so make sure to go and hang out there with your family today would you now turn your attention to the screens for a few more ways to connect here at higher vision church happy easter everyone and we are so glad you're here Welcome to Higher Vision Church. I'm Jared. And I'm Duvette. And we're the lead pastors here at Higher Vision. Listen, we've got exciting things happening for you and your family, so check this out. Get ready to start the party this summer at Vacation Bible School here at Higher Vision Church. Your children are going to have an amazing time with exciting games, engaging Bible stories, and making new friends. This summer is going to be one to remember. So what are you waiting for? Sign your child up for the VBS nearest you. Also, it's free. I can't wait. It's gonna be so much fun. Hey church, I wanna invite you out Sunday, April 21st at 6 p.m. to the outpouring. It's gonna be at our Valencia location and I love it because this is our chance to come together, all locations under one roof, worshiping our God together. This is gonna be a special outpouring. Pastor Jared will just have wrapped up his sermon series on parenting. There's gonna be a special time in our service where our staff is gonna pray over you and your kids. So put it in your calendars. I can't wait to see you there. Happy Easter, everybody. My name is Mark Francie, and I'm so excited. I get to announce that seven short weeks from today, you're gonna be a part of the largest water baptism in world history. You heard me right. In the state of California, in all 58 counties, churches just like the one you're sitting in right now are gonna join together in what we all agree on, that we're gonna make disciples and we're gonna baptize the masses. If you've never been water baptized and you're ready to take the next step, or you've been off track and you're ready to recommit your life to the Lord, the Bible tells us to identify in Jesus' death, His burial, and His resurrection through the act of water baptism. Sign up today using our QR code on the screen. God bless you. Great days ahead. There's so much going on at Higher Vision and we're thankful you celebrated Easter with us. So go out and have a great time with your family. There are bunnies, a bounce house, Easter egg hunt, and take a picture with your family. Remember, you're only a guest once. After that, you're family. So come back and see us here at Higher Vision.
thought that I was too far gone With everything I've done wrong Yeah, I'm the one that dug this grave But you call my name You call my name I thought that I was too far gone With everything I've done wrong Yeah, I'm the one that dug this grave But you call my name You call my name How many are thankful Jesus is still rolling the stones away? Amen? Woo! Happy Easter, everyone. We're so glad that you're with us. And I want to take a moment. If you're new today, my name is Jared Mang. I'm the lead pastor. What you may not know is that we're one church in many locations. And today we have our church family joining us, first of all, online in places like Arizona, Oregon, Nevada, Germany, Mexico. We also have our other locations, Canyon Country. We have places like Crescenta Valley, Blythe, Ventura, all of our locations. Can we do something today? Wherever you are, whatever location, put your hands together and welcome each other to church today. Wow. Wow. Man, I want to reiterate that we have a special event going on for families. And after the service, I want to invite you, if you have kids especially, go get your kids and then head back down to the end of the building this way because we have literally a bunny farm set up. We have Easter egg hunts. We've got places for you to take pictures. It's going to be a lot of fun. You don't want to miss it. Enjoy Easter with your family. And in fact, you know, it's it's bad weather. How many know sometimes life gives you lemons? And what do we do? We make lemonade. That was kind of weak. Let's try it again. You know the phrase. All of our locations, when life gives you lemons, what do you do? Make Make lemonade. And that's what we did. We were supposed to be outside with this massive outdoor park, but... We made some lemonade, and we're still going to have a great time, so come and join us. In fact, let me just throw this in. My sister-in-law was known for messing up well-known phrases, and one time I asked her, I like, you know, when life throws you lemons, what do you do? She goes, you throw back an orange. <laughs> she didn't quite get it. She's a little bit off there with that one. Um, you know, there's another phrase that's kind of old school, but I love it. When I went to church when I was a kid, on Easter Sunday, you'd show up, and you know what you'd say? Someone would walk up, and they'd say, he is risen. And then there'd be this response, he is risen indeed. So I thought we'd go old school at all our locations, those online as well. Let's try it together. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. Well, before we dive into our theme, Rolled Away, I thought I would try out a joke on this Easter. So either this is going to be fun or pathetic. One of the two, we'll figure it out. Um, But here's how it goes. In an Indiana cemetery, there lies a tombstone which reads... Pause, stranger, when you pass me by, or pass me by, as you are now, so once was I. As I am now, so you will be. So prepare for death and follow me. An unknown passerby read those words and scratched the following words beneath them. To follow you, I am not content until I know which way you went. <laughs> You know, the good news is we can know which way we're going. We can follow Jesus, for he's the way, the truth, and the life. And I want to read to you a passage of scripture, all of our locations. I want you to tune in closely now. We're going to look at Mark chapter 16. We're going to begin with verse 3. And here's what's happened. Jesus was crucified on the cross, and then they quickly rushed and put him in a tomb on Friday night. Why? Because Saturday was the Sabbath, and on the Sabbath, nobody could do anything. So they didn't get to fully embalm his body. And so when they put him in the tomb, Sunday morning, the women came early because they wanted to now put the spices and wrap his body. 
And this is where we pick up on our story. On the way, they were asking each other, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? But as they arrived, they looked up and saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. Somebody say rolled away. Would you close your eyes as we pray? Every location, close your eyes, if you will. Holy Spirit, I ask that your anointing would stretch beyond that screen into every heart, into every home. And I pray today that you'd anoint my words, but I pray that you'd anoint our hearts to receive it. Everyone, put your hand on your heart. Pray this prayer. Say, Holy Spirit, speak to me this Easter. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. On the video and the song that was sung right before I came up, you saw that there were people that were facing challenges, addiction, brokenness, despair. And the message of the song was that Jesus is still rolling stones. And as I began to think about this idea, Mary was on her way to the tomb, and here's what her first thought was. When I get to the tomb, there's going to be something standing between me and Jesus. And who's going to get rid of it? And as I I began to think about it, I I thought about the Easter story, and I want to take a little bit different angle this this week. I don't know if you know, but some of you might not know, that we started the church. Next Sunday will be our 19-year anniversary. And uh, pretty awesome. That means 19 times I've preached on the same story. And interestingly enough, God often shows me something new when I read the Bible. And when I was reading this time, what came to me was simply this. Why did Jesus, or why did God roll the stone away? Because here's the interesting thing. When Jesus died and he was resurrected, the Bible said that he received a glorified body. Now, here's what's interesting. The glorified body of Jesus was a lot like the body we have now, but it also had an upgrade. It was similar in that, remember when he showed up to his disciples after he'd been resurrected and it was early in the morning and he's like, hey guys, and they're like, whoa, it's Jesus. And then they're like, he he looks at him, he's like, anybody making breakfast? Man, some chorizo and huevos would be good right now. (laughs) And so they give him some fish and bread and he eats. He was hungry, body like you and me. Not only that, remember when Philip showed up, he said, hey, check out my scars. He had scars in his body. But at the same time, the Bible says that one time the disciples were locked in a room and Jesus literally walked through the wall and said, hey, guys, I'm alive. Jesus could walk through walls. So here's the question. If Jesus could walk through walls, then why did God roll the stone away? Because Jesus didn't need him to roll it away for him to get out. Maybe the message of Easter Yes, the message of Easter is Jesus is alive. But the other message is Jesus rolls away the stone. Maybe the Easter message isn't that Jesus needed to get out. Maybe God rolled the stone away because he's inviting you and I to come in and experience the miracle of Easter. So today I'm going to give you three thoughts as we dive into this stop topic about why the stone was rolled away. So here's point number one. All of our locations, I want you to write this down if you're taking notes. Maybe the stone was rolled away. Why? To remove the obstacles. To remove the obstacles. I want to now go to the book of John, and I want to read this story, and I want you to see it from a little bit different angle, from the apostle John. It says this, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciples, the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. She said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and we don't know where they've put him. Peter and the other disciple started out for the tomb. They were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stopped and looked in, saw the linen wrapping lying there, but he didn't go in. I want to focus for a second on this part of the story, because what we see is that Mary shows up, the stone is rolled away, and then what happens? She ran. Anybody ever known someone that was a runner? When something goes wrong, they run. 
Mary didn't understand because Messiahs aren't supposed to die. This was not what she'd expected. And when she faced a moment of uncertainty, her first response was to run. I had a dog who was a runner. And if the door just cracked, boom, he was gone. Anybody have an animal like that? It's interesting because Mary was the runner. That can happen. Remember Jonah? God came to Jonah and says, I want you to go to Nineveh and preach the gospel. And he didn't understand because Nineveh was an evil empire. And they, they killed and tortured and raped and pillaged. And he's thinking, why would you want them to repent? And so what does he do? He runs the other way. Sometimes we run. Maybe you're here today and you've run because of disappointment or because of pain. How what I love about this story is that the author Make sure he points something out. It says that she told Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved. And you know who that was, by the way? It was John. And he's the one who wrote the book. He wrote this gospel. And then he tells us this. They both ran to the tomb, but the one whom Jesus loved got there first. In other words, he basically wanted to make sure everybody in generations that would come after, he wanted them to know, I run faster than Peter did. I love that. There was the runner. Here's the other person, the skeptic. John finally gets to the tomb, and the Bible says that he looks in, but he doesn't go in. And I just think of a skeptic, because skepticism says, I'm just going to keep my distance, because here's the deal. If I don't get close, then I won't get hurt. And maybe you're here today, and that's been your mindset. Well, I don't want to get too close to God. I don't want to get too involved in church. I don't want to to move too close in in my relationship of faith. Here's why, because you know you can get hurt, and so you're kind of skeptical. You kind of made up your mind. I just want to point something out. Did you know that Satan, he's real, that he wants to destroy, he wants to kill, he wants to keep you distant. He wants to keep you as far away from God as he possibly can. In fact, that's what sin does. Remember the garden, the serpent? He visits Eve. He says, eat of the fruit of the tree. And he convinces her. And then what happens? Because of sin, they're removed from the garden. Satan wants you to be far from God. And in this story, skepticism, disappointment caused people to be distant. But what I think might be the message is that when the stone was rolled away, it's as if Christ is saying to you and he's saying to me in every location, he's simply saying this, come on in. I want to invite you into the tomb. I want you to invite you into the story. I want you to be a part and I want you to see that I'm a God of miracles, that I'm a God who forgives. What does the Bible say? Draw close to God and God will draw close to you. Maybe rather than running or standing in a different distance, he removed the obstacles. It's time to move a little closer. You know, you can, you can look but never go in. I'll give you an example. So years ago, uh, my kids and I and, and Devette, we went to Hawaii when they were young. I was asked to preach there. And we showed up at the hotel. It was night. When the sun came up, everybody was awake, we looked out the window, it was a little balcony, and we were right on the water. The, the, the sun was coming up, it was rising, it was beautiful. We looked down and there's a little island just off the land there called Coconut Island. And as we looked down there, there was everybody playing and swimming, but there was this little building and, all, and people were climbing up the building. It's about 10 feet above the water. They were climbing up the building, kids, and they were jumping off into the ocean. And uh, my kids look at me and they're like, dad, we got to go to Coconut Island. And I'm like, okay, okay, we'll go to Coconut Island. And, uh, but we got to go to church first. So we went to church and we came back, got in our swimsuits. We went down there and we all get down there. We're running around all excited and we climb up on top of this little building. And Tanner, he's the first one. He's like, dad, I'm going over. And I'm like, go for it. And he runs and wah, jumps and splashes in the water. And he comes up to him and he's like, woo. And then Hudson, boom, he jumps in. And then the girls kind of a little bit more tentatively, they're like, okay. And together they jumped into the water. And then they, they come out of the water and they start going, dad, 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 dad. Like, dad, it's your turn. And then at that moment, I remember something that was really important that I'd forgotten. Dad is scared of heights. <laughs> and I just had this like, ooh, I don't know. I, I'm, I was like, you know what? You guys do it. Come on, you do it. Dad's going to watch. And, but, but then there was that moment of like, no, 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 no. If I don't jump in, they're going to remember this forever. Yeah. 
And so finally, they, after some coaxing and, come on, Dad, come on, you can do it. I'm like, okay. And I overcame my fear and I, whoo, I jumped into the water and I came up and I was like, whoo. And then suddenly it was like, we just kept running and jumping and it was, it was a blast. Here's the point. Some things are not meant to be explained. They're meant to be experienced. And when it comes to Easter, it's not something that you just want to stand at a dif- distance and watch. Jesus is inviting you in. Come on in and experience my love. Come on in and experience my grace. Come on in and experience my power. Let me explain it another way. Let me ask a quick question. Haley's going to help me out here today. How many of you, if I were to take a, a vote today, all of our locations, how many of you are Cadbury egg people? Wave at me. We got the ca- Cadbury egg people? All right. How many of you are like the robin eggs? Okay, how many of you are like, no, 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 there's only one way to go, and that's the Reese's Easter egg. How many would say, because tell me know that they're the best, in the words of Nacho Libre. They're the best. Yeah. Somebody like, why are you doing this? Because some things are not meant to be explained. They're meant to be experienced. Come on, somebody. So here's a question. How many have never tried a Reese's Easter egg? Peanut butter egg. You've never tried one? You've never tried one? You? You? Oh, wait a minute. We have kids in the room. You've never tried Easter egg from Reese's Peanut Butter Cup? You want to come up and grab them if you want. They're yours. Right here. Come, come grab them. Uh, is it right behind you? Uh, you, were, uh, you thought I was looking at you? I'm sorry. There's some kids behind you. Do you mind if they take it instead of you? All right. You can hand it right there. Right there to him. All right. Give it a hand. Maybe that's a sign. Sharing is caring. I don't know. Let's see. Some things are not meant to be explained. They're meant to be experienced. Jesus rolls the stone away. And I think the message is, I've removed the obstacles for you. But you have to come on in. And no stone is too big. This discouragement, fear, maybe lack of faith. Because Mary, what does she say? She says, they've taken his body, and we don't know where it is. That's kind of ironic, because Jesus, three times, had already told them what was going to happen. He told them, I'm going to be handed over to the chief priest, I'm going to be killed, and I'm going to come back to life. But she couldn't see it. She couldn't understand it. Why? Because her faith was too low. Maybe today, it's skepticism. Maybe today, it's disappointment. Maybe it's today, you don't feel like you have much faith. Here's a question. Every location, answer this in your heart. Are you farther from Jesus today than you should be? What God is doing is he's saying, come on in. I'll end this point with this thought I was thinking about. Could, could I have you help me with the sermon and hold my phone right there? There you go. You're going to preach the next point, by the way. No, not really. I'm just teasing. <laughs> How many of you have ever grew up in church? And in church, they used to do like these dramatizations with like mimes and people. Have you ever seen that? You, remember, you know the mime that has like the face painted with a smile? And then they come up and they start doing stuff like this. They look at you and they're like. Have <laughs> oh, yeah, you ever seen them do it? Right, right. And they start doing stuff like this. And, and they start, and you're like, whoa. And here's the reality. How many know there's no wall there? <laughs> it's all a figment of their imagination. And, and the reason I'm, I'm saying that today, thank you so much, is simply this. Sometimes in life, we create a wall that isn't really there. Sometimes in life, we've put a stone in place that, that's, that's just part of our mental mindset. And God is saying, listen, whether it's a, a mental thing, whether it's a skepticism thing, whether it's you got hurt and you're running because you don't want to be hurt again, or, or, or maybe it's because your faith isn't where it needs to be, here's the message. I rolled the stone away. There's nothing standing. Come on in. Come to me, all you who are weary. Come to you who are laden and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and see. Listen, Jesus is calling you today. Come on into the tomb 
I have removed the stone. I've rolled it away. Come on, somebody shout amen. amen. Here, here's the second thought. Second thought is this. Maybe he rolled the stone away, not just to remove the obstacles, but he rolled the stone away to reveal the evidence. Look at what it says. Let's go now to John's gospel in Matthew or John 20, verse 6. He says this. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings lying there while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first, let me pause right there, notice that he throws it in twice to make sure everybody knows I run faster than Peter. It's the second time. Then the disciple who ran really fast arrives, but he says this, he also went in. And he saw and he believed. For until then, they still hadn't understood the scripture that said Jesus must rise from the dead. Here's what I love. Peter is like a bull in a china closet, right? He just shows up and the first thing he does is like, I'm going to go in and I'm going to see for myself. I'm going to examine the evidence. I'm going to figure this thing out. Have you ever been in a situation where you see something and you're like, you know what? I'm just going to figure it out. I'm going to find the truth. I'm going to see if I can solve that problem. I think a good way to explain that is back in the day, something called a Rubik's Cube. How many, remember, how many of you have ever tried out a Rubik's Cube before? And how many of when you saw it, you thought, oh, that's easy. I can figure that out until you tried to do it, uh-huh. right? Have you ever done it? And I did, man. I worked on it and worked on it. It seemed like every time I'd get close, I'd get it to a point where there was like one color that was wrong in the middle, <laughs> Right? And then I'd be like, okay, I'll fix that. And then I fix it. And then it's on the other side. And so I was messing around with it one day. And it just so happened that my son Hudson was there, which he's here today. And so I was like, Hudson, here you go. And so I just handed it to Hudson. And so I handed it to Hudson. And I'm thinking, well, you know, it took me 45 minutes. And I didn't figure out. And, and I'm like, maybe it'll take him an hour. And, and it's already fixed. Look at how fast that was. Pretty good, son. Not too bad. Let me, let me hand it off here. That's what happened. It was like, boom, he solved the problem. But as I thought about what happened at the tomb, what happened with Peter, here's what came to my heart. It's easy to believe your theory if you never look at the evidence. And how many of us are missing out on something that's miraculous? I love that they document their unbelief. They say, I don't understand everything. But Peter says, I'm going to go in and I'm going to look at the evidence. And the Bible says that Peter walks in and he noticed. You know what the word notice means in the Greek? It means to scrutinize. Listen, God is big enough to handle your questions. God has invited you into the tomb. And here's what he notices. He notices there's a bunch of clothing lying there that had wrapped around Jesus' body. And then the the clothes that went around his face were folded up neatly. Now, let me give you a little context. You see, in those days, if you went to someone's house as a Jewish, you know, a person of Israel, and you went into their home and you had a meal, at the end of your meal, you could do two things. One is you just throw the napkin down and you get up and you leave. And here's what it meant. I'm done. But you could also take the napkin and if you folded it neatly and set it down, here's what it said. It said, hey, I'm not finished yet. There's still more that I want to do. And I love this because Peter gets into the tomb and he he starts to check out the evidence and suddenly he realizes something snaps in his mind and goes, wait a minute. This evidence is a reminder that Jesus said he was going to die and he was going to rise again. The evidence proves that he hasn't just been moved. He's been resurrected. And I just want to tell you today, listen, investigation brings revelation. And I'm here to tell you today, if maybe you've had questions, maybe you've been uncertain, maybe you've walked away for a while and you're far from God, Jesus is inviting you back into the tomb. And listen, here's what I know, that when you taste and see, the Bible says, you'll discover that the Lord is good. When you dive into the Bible, suddenly you'll start to see things. When you dive into a relationship with God, suddenly you'll find peace. When you reach out to God, suddenly you'll see miracles. We serve a God who isn't dead, he's alive, and the more you get to know him, the more you're going to love him, the more you're going to see his goodness and his mercy, that it endures forever. Surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. You can trust his word 
You can trust his promises. Jesus opened, most tombs needed to stay sealed. Why? Because the body decomposed and it stunk. We want to hide that. Jesus didn't hide it. He rolled the stone away so you could examine the evidence. Let me ask you a question. This room and those online, how many here have tasted of the Lord, have checked out his goodness, have reached into a relationship with him and discovered that he truly is good? Come on. Can we give the Lord a praise today? I'll make one observation and I'll move on. And the observation is this. If you read it, it says that John, he came to the tomb and looked in, but didn't go in. But Peter went in, and the Bible says that when Peter, let me read it to you, then the disciple who had reached the tomb first, you got to point that out, he says, also went in, and he saw, and he believed. For until then, they still hadn't understood. Can I just make another observation? Here's what God's word might be saying. Dad, your family's waiting on you. to to move into the tomb and to have a relationship with God, to make church a priority, to get into his word. Why? Because when you go, others will follow. Student, maybe God's waiting on you because there are people around you that could be influenced and impacted by your faith. Don't be distant from God. This Easter, say, God, I'm coming. I'm gonna go into the tomb and I'm gonna follow you. He removed the obstacles, revealed the evidence, and here's the last one, ready? Maybe the the stone was rolled away to restore your hope. I believe that the stone was rolled away to restore your hope. I want to read this part of the story. John chapter 20, verse 10 says it this way, then they went home. Peter and John went back, but Mary stayed, and she was standing outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot uh, foot place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Then she turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she couldn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him that I may go and get him. Now watch what happens. Mary, Jesus calls her by name. She turned to him and cried out, Rabboni, which is Hebrew for teacher. Here's what's amazing about this story. Mary, this is the woman who Jesus delivered her from all these demonic uh, forces that were oppressing and possessing. She was delivered from demons. She traveled with Jesus. She served Jesus. She was a part of Jesus' ministry, and yet he was standing right in front of her, and she couldn't even recognize him. I thought to myself, how could that happen? It made me think back to so many, many years ago. I was in high school. My dad, um, his vision just kind of got worse and worse as time went on. And back in the day, they didn't have quite the technology they had now, where now you can have glasses that look normal, that are really strong. But back in those days, when you got strong glasses, they were like thick as, you know, the bottom of a Coke bottle. I mean, they were, come on, how many know what I'm talking about? You look at them and it looked like their eyes were like this, you know, looking through them. In fact, I was trying to find a picture of my dad's glasses so that I could show you. Now, let me just give you, set the context. I finally found a picture. I was hoping to find one of just him, but unfortunately, this one has my whole family back when I was in high school. So when I show you the picture, don't judge because the Bible says if you judge, you'll be judged. Okay, I just want (laughs) to, and by the way, turn in your picture when you're in high school and we can compare notes. Okay, so anyway, I found this picture and uh, here it is. And uh, this was my older brother, me. I was in high school. My younger brother's in junior high. I know that hairdo. I don't know anything about that hairdo now. It's all in the past. And uh, thank you, Jesus. But look at my dad. And if you look at my dad, he has these thick glasses on. Please take that picture down. Amen. Um, Here's the interesting thing. One time when I was a kid... I thought, ooh, my dad's glasses. They were, he, for some reason, he, I know he, didn't, they, he didn't have them and they were sitting there. And so I'm like, I'm gonna wear them. And so I remember the first time I took his glasses and these aren't them, but I, to illustrate it, I put them on. And I gotta tell you, when I put them on, it was like I was in a whole new world. <laughs> because everything went blurry. 
I, could, I couldn't see a single thing. I stuck my hand up in front of him and it looked like I had five hands. The reason I, I stop and I say this is that when I thought about Mary, she couldn't recognize Jesus. I couldn't recognize anything because here's the reality. What you see is always influenced by the lens you're looking through. And how many times do you and I miss miraculous things, miss that Jesus, you know that Jesus said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. He's like, he said, I'm like a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Jesus was there in the middle of her pain, in the middle of her hopelessness, but here was the problem. She was stuck because all she could do is see through the lens of her disappointment. And I got to tell you, we live in a world right now, every location, look at me. We live in a world right now where people are trained and encouraged to be the victim, to stay the victim. And so unfortunately, because they focus, now listen, when you have a trauma or you have an issue, and maybe you're victimized, yes, you need to deal with it. Yes, you need to confront it. Yes, you need to see healing and so on, whether it's therapy. But I got to tell you, there's a better remedy and his name is Jesus. But as long as you live your life Looking through the lens of the victim and the trauma, you may never see how close Jesus is. Because here's what the story says. Jesus looked at her in the midst of her pain and he said, Mary, he called her name, I see you. Can I say today, wherever you are, in other locations or right here, hear me. Jesus is saying to you today, I see you. I see your hurt, I see your pain, I see your hopelessness, I see your fear, I see your depression, I see your, your crummy marriage, I see what you're walking through. And then he says this, he addresses it and he says, listen, you need to name your glasses, you need to name your lens. He says, why are you crying? What's the reason? See, Jesus wants to point it out so that he can heal it. Jesus wants to point it out so that he can roll the stone away. You saw in the video that people were addicted, people were depressed, but God has the ability to roll away the stones. What is the source of your hopelessness today? I love it because once he finally says, what is it? And she points it out. Then he simply says, Mary. He says, I see you. I am here. You are not alone. Jesus wants you to name it because he's able to remove it. He's able to take the place that literally is your place of pain, the place of your brokenness, and turn it into a place of hope and a place of healing. The place of what you think is your greatest disaster and your greatest failure can become the greatest place of victory and breakthrough in your life. Easter means that he can turn your life around, that he can bring hope to you, that he can change your life, that he can bring victory in the midst of despair. It means he rolled a stone to give you hope. There's an old song we used to sing in church when I was in kids' church. Now I'm going old school here again. How many know when you do kids' songs, you got to teach them motions so that they don't forget them? How many sometimes wish we did that in adult church, right? So we wouldn't forget and didn't have to play karaoke worship. You ever feel like you're playing karaoke worship or something because you can't remember the words? So we teach the kids motions. And this old song went like this. God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. Anybody remember this old song? He's still alive. How many of you have never heard this song before? All right. All right. I'm teaching it to you. God's not dead. He's still alive. I can feel him in my hands. I feel him in my feet. I feel him all over me. So I'm like, you really got into that last point. I don't know. I was feeling it right now. It was like, whoo, I feel him. Feel him all over me. Can I tell you something? You can feel him in your hands. You can experience him in your heart. You can experience him in your pain. You can experience him in your despair because he gives hope to the hopeless. He's inviting you in. I want to turn it now to all of our location pastors. They're going to lead you in a time of ministry and a time of prayer, and God is going to roll away every stone. Would you close your eyes today? Can I tell you the biggest stone? The biggest stone is the stone of sin. 
And the Bible says we all have sinned. When I, when I say that, I'm not pointing the finger at you. I'm pointing the finger at me. I'm pointing the finger at us. Because the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short. But because Jesus died on a cross and then he rose again, he proved who he said he was. I am the son of God. I am the way. I am the truth and the life. And if anyone believes in me, though they were dead, they shall live. He can remove the stone of sin in your life. All you have to do is, number one, confess your sin. And number two, put your faith in Jesus. And I want to make sure that you're on your way. That joke we told at the beginning, there's some truth to it. Are you on your way to heaven? You can know when you walk out of this room today, you turn off that computer that you're on your way to heaven. And so I'm going to just simply do this. I'm going to count to three. I'm going to say one, two, three. And if you want to confess your sin and call on Jesus, you might say, well, pastor, I don't, I'm not a big faith person. This is all new to me. Listen, faith isn't this experience where you see a you know, lightning and a, and a light from heaven and hear a voice that says, "Woo, I love you. No, faith is simply the decision to believe. Today, you can put your hope. You, you've tried it on your own. How many know that when we try it on our own, we usually end up empty? We usually end up realizing that there's something more. You know what the more is? Jesus. He's removed the stone. And if you'll have the courage to acknowledge him before men, when you stand before God in heaven, he'll acknowledge you before his father. Now, maybe you're here and you've prayed the prayer before, but you've, you've been like Mary and you've run. And now you're farther away from Jesus than you should be. And today you need to reconnect, recommit and put your faith in Jesus. I'm talking to you too. So are you ready for the first time? Recommitment. When I say three, lift your hand high. Ready? One, two, three. Come on, lift your hands. Where are you? I want to acknowledge you today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Who else today? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Anybody else? Thank you over there. Thank you back there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, hands all over. Back there, I see your hand over here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, hands all over this place. You can put your hands down. Now pray this prayer with me. The Bible says, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved. Pray this prayer. Say, Jesus, today I acknowledge I've sinned and I need a savior. Come into my life. Forgive me and change me. I put my faith in you as a son of God as a savior, you are risen and you roll the stone away. In Jesus name, I pray. And everybody shouted, come on. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise today? Now, if you pray that prayer, I want to encourage you to do something. I want you to use your phone and text the word saved at HV. You see it right there. Saved at HV. Um, just text that to the number 94,000. And there'll be just a quick little thing. You can give us a couple pieces of information. And we're going to pray for you. We're going to pray on that journey you've begun. That God is going to do a wonderful work in your life. You can also stop in the lobby and go to the right. There's a prayer room and we'll pray for you today. In fact, anyone that needs prayer, maybe you're going through something. And you want someone to pray that God will remove that stone. Go in there and someone will pray with you after service. We're going to take a moment right now. and We're going to worship the Lord through our giving. There's a couple ways to give here at Higher Vision. One way is with cash or check. So if you'd like to do that, the ushers are going to walk up and down the aisles. They're going to have envelopes. Just wave at them, and they'll give you an envelope. You can fill that out, and when the bags go by, you can place it in there. You can also give electronically, the QR code. There, those joining us online, click on the button at the top that says give. We have a kiosk in the back. There's a number, the app, lots of ways to do it. Today, we're going to worship. How many of you know Easter is a good weekend to be generous and give to God? Why? Because he gave his only son. And so today, as we prepare to give, would you do this? Would you stand to your feet? The ushers are going to come. They're going to begin to pass the bags. As they do, can we take a moment on this Easter and worship our risen King? We're going to sing these words, all hail. Lift your voice and sing. All hail. To the name above all names, Jesus, you reign. Jesus, you reign. You're the name above all names. Come on. And hell still knows. 
that the grave is still empty. All praise and all praise, all praise to the name above all names. Jesus, you reign. You're the name above So here's what I want to do, church. Would you just reach out towards heaven, lift your hand? We're so thankful that you've come today. And my heart would be that you would leave encouraged. And I want to pray a blessing over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I think there's some people that are farther from you than they thought they would be a year ago. Or maybe they've gotten sucked into things of life or they've been influenced by others or I don't know what the reasons are but they're they're distant or they're not where they should be and I pray today you would draw them back I pray that they would begin to move towards the empty tomb they would say Lord I'm going to draw close to you and as I draw close to you here's what we know God will draw close back he will take us in his arms he will help us he will heal us he will forgive us so father I thank you that people are moving closer to you in the year 2024 than they've been in a long time or maybe have ever been before. God, I also pray right now that there's some people here that have some stones, some things in their lives that are holding them back. Lord, maybe it's skepticism. Maybe it's disappointment. Maybe it's hopelessness. Lord, maybe it's brokenness or addiction. Lord, I pray right now that you would begin to do what only you could do, that you would begin to heal broken hearts, that you begin to restore relationships. God, that you would begin to do miracles in every life, in every family, in every